iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. It has been a dream come true. It's absolutely extraordinary. I can't, you know, I just pinch myself, really, I, I, that I'm even a part of it and that I'm even on that stage. So Lindsay and I have been friends for a long time, and, and she and I were, you know, she was living in L.A. at the time. She was, like, we were texting and Marco Poloing, we were, we were still Marco Poloing, about, you know, this, this project coming up that she was doing, that she was getting excited about, and she was, you know, we were talking about her audition sort of process, whatever she had to do. And as it kind of solidified that she was going to be doing Merrily, I was like, okay, I want to do that too. So I really just... Um, pretty much immediately emailed my agent and manager and I said, this is coming to Broadway and I want to get in, I want to be seen for it. I don't, I don't care what role, I just want to be seen. Um, so they really got on it right away and they emailed the casting director and got me an appointment, which was great because I, actually I wasn't really like, I don't think I was on, on their original list of people to see, um, but I, I just knew in my heart that I needed to be in the room. and. Um, yeah, and I did my audition. Actually, I was nine months pregnant when I did my audition, and like and callback. And actually, two days after my callback, I had my baby. It was a wild, a whole wild thing. And then, yes, and then like another two months went by, and I went back in for a chemistry read with Jonathan Groff, and had a two month old at the time. I mean, you know, but I thank God they could see past like my huge pregnant belly because it was just you know, it was wild. I did my audition just very pregnant and like having contractions and things. I mean, it was like the craziest audition. <laughs> Crazy. And thank God it all worked out. I actually love that it plays in reverse. I, you know, I kind of come out hot with, you know, not a day goes by and it's this very tragic sort of moment. And I love that, that it's like right out of the gate and then kind of you get to unfurl it backwards. I, it leaves, it's a tragedy told in reverse, and it leaves us as the actors, and I think the audience too, uh, feeling that there is hope, and like, you know, you leave in this very hopeful place because you see them sort of actually at the beginning of their story before any of these choices have been made. So I have kind of grown to prefer it, and I love telling the story in reverse. It actually is helpful as the actor. Yeah, it's been a journey. I, I'm still trying to figure out how to make it my own, I think. I just, every night is different and it's so organic and fluid and Jonathan is so present and safe and and so I feel like I can really explore. And, um, you know, now we, you know, and it's never the same. Night overnight, it's never the same. We just are, we keep it really organic and fresh. And thankfully too, our director gave us a lot of leeway. So, and, and me, I, you know, I, she, even the way she would give me notes about this, the song and the scene, which are all connected, I, you know, it was very much with the understanding that it would be fluid and it would change. And she didn't really want to lock anything in. She wanted that spontaneous emotion and spontaneous behavior to still be present, even though it's like we do it every single day. It never feels like like we've done it every single day for the past two years, you know, or for the past year. So I am, yeah, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I've been given freedom and think that's what keeps it fresh. And then honestly, if I really think about the fact that it, I have to make it my own, I think I would, I would freeze. Um, more than that, I just want to make it honest and truthful and not try to apply anything else on it and just really ride the wave of Sondheim's beautiful writing. I mean, that's like a perfect song. I do have to be really careful and I don't have, you know, the heavy lifting of like, you know, I played Glinda for a long time. It's not as much of a heavy lift as that, but, but now I have three children and they're very young. And so I do need to get the sleep that I need and you know when you're with three little ones all day you're really using your voice a lot and I don't think I because this is my first time doing eight shows a week on top of having three kids I I'm understanding how physically and vocally drained I am by the time we even just get to the show at night um so you know I don't I had to stop drinking alcohol I have to really kind of watch the things that I eat that I know are a little inflammatory for me or cause a lot of mucus I mean you know all the things that singers talk about um, and then for me the tricky thing is sleep you know I, I after the show I really have to go home and go to bed because I have an early you know I wake up at six with my kids and then it's not like a slow I can slowly wake up it's you know sprint out of the gate in the morning. So, um, yeah, I do have to really be careful. And for me, that's just translated to how my diet is and um, my sleep. It is a real physical thing. 
they're pretty little. My um, oldest is only five and a half, but she actually came, she watched act two when we were at New York Theater Workshop and she loved it. I mean, she sat through the whole thing and loved it. So, and she, now she wants to see the whole thing now that we're on Broadway. And I'm sure, I, we haven't really figured it out, but I think we're gonna let her come and watch the show with Chris, my husband. But, um, you know, it's a long show and it's kind of heavy, but I think I want her to, her first Broadway show to be the one that I'm in, right? I'm, <laughs> so. Yeah, she'll come. A favorite era. I do love, I, they changed my costume. I, I had just had my baby when we did it off Broadway. And so some of those costumes don't fit me anymore. So they changed some of the looks and I really have like enjoyed the new look for Not A Day Goes By. It's pants and uh, like a jacket. It's a little more like, um, yeah, it's a little more like she's in her power. And um, I really love the design of the Not A Day Goes By pant look, suit look. Um, but I also like, I mean, the 50s look with the, you know, cute like sleeves on the Bobby Jackie Jack. I mean, I love them all and they're true vintage. So they're not like a recreated vintage. They are actual vintage piece, pieces that they pulled for the show, which is rare. So cool. Yeah. And they have to keep kind of like repairing them, you know, but it's like so far they've held up or mine have. And it's just, it, I think it gives the show a little extra something, the fact that they're actually from that era. Being with friends on stage is just the ultimate gift. And Lindsay and I have been really close. We met doing Wicked in 2013, and we've been friends ever since. And it has been so amazing to be able to do this with her. And I mean, I'm in her room, you know, before the show and at intermission, just catching up and, you know, you know, her daughter will be in there. So I'll play with Lucy and, and my kids come up on Saturday and, you know, it's just, it is unique. And I think like a really special time. And I just, I, it's not lost on me, like what a gift it is really that I get to be in the show with one of my best friends. Yeah. It's, it's truly amazing. Oh my gosh, they're just such great people and such great guys, not to mention like incredibly strong actors. It's just the best of the best. And then there are these really great human beings that are just, you know, we talk about life and, you know, Dan's got a baby. And so we talk about parenthood and, you know, it's, and then Jonathan and I actually have known each other since, you know, 2006. So we've known each other for a long time, too. And it's been the kind of thing where we've almost worked together or have worked similarly, you know, on different projects at different times um, or the same project at different times. So it is really fun to be with him. So he's been a friend for a long time. And I mean, it's really like a, an embarrassment of riches to be in this show with these people in this caliber of a cast. So, yeah, it has been a really cool thing. Oh my gosh, Advi I mean, I think again, keep going, keep persevering. It's gonna be hard at different times, but you, at, at a lot of times, at a lot of time, the majority of the time it will be challenging, but keep going. And just, you know, you gotta, you can't look at what everybody else is doing. You just gotta keep the f your focus and your goal in mind and just know that you're unique and special that there's nobody else like you. And it sounds trite, but it's so true. And you, what you, trusting what you bring to the table is the most important thing, because that's what makes it unique. Um, yeah, but you gotta keep going. You have to keep going, you can't give up. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz.